YouTube friends. I haven't seen a video really going over the differences that you might find in Dooney's um, Florentine leather collection because even if you get the same color of the Florentine leather in a bag, the finish might be totally different. So I just wanted to kind of show you what I have because I have a pretty good um, selection of the different types of Florentine and colors. And Dooney doesn't really go into um, what their Florentine process is on their website. So I looked up in general um, how they process Florentine leather. And I found information on a different site, um, oldangler.com. And I'm sure it's different for Dooney. But I just wanted to kind of get the gist of how they dye it because there is such variation. So, on their site it says that the process begins with the preparation of the rawhides and they put them in these big wooden drums and um, it purifies the skins of the animal hair, proteins, fats, etc. So, once the skin has been prepared for vegetable tanning, then it's soaked in water for many days. And that's when it gets the natural tannins made from the extracts of... Um, different trees or whatever coloring they put in there. So if they're using natural vegetable dyes, that's at the point when they put it in here. I don't know if Dooney does it. Obviously, this is not a color found in nature other than the sky or the water. <laughs> so, you know, I don't know what Dooney's process is, but this is kind of a standard for um, processing Florentine leather. And so once it's soaking in those tannins for several days, that's when it gets to be a more flexible and resistant leather. And then um, they dye and fatten the skin, so then it takes on a different color and pliability, depending on the amount of color and fattener used. And I think that might um, make for a different finish on some of these Florentine pieces. And so, um, you know, everyone does it differently. Um, then at the end they dry the hides to be used. So it's kind of interesting to see that it does matter what type of dyes they use in the process, but it's probably similar for most tanneries doing a Florentine leather or a true Florentine leather. So let's look at the colors here. Um, I've got several other ones off to the side here, but we'll start here. So this is the one that they call natural. And mine is a few years old, so it's got a nice patina on it. One of the benefits of the Florentine leather is it's supposed to really um, age nicely and darken over time and with your hand oils, etc. Now this is a beautiful color, but um, I don't use it as often as I'd like to, even though I absolutely love this bag. I do use it a lot. I, I won't say that. I do use it a lot, but I'm always pretty careful because it scratches so easily. Um, this particular Florentine, see, this particular Florentine seems to be like what I call a drier color, where it just seems to really be um, not shiny. It has a sheen to it, but it's not as shiny as some of my others, and it really does scratch very easily. So this is the natural. Now this one is my most questionable one. I love this one. This is the pale blue. And it's usually offered in the summer and springtime on Dooney. But this is a Florentine leather satchel, according to the description. But this one has almost like a, um, a coating on it. It's almost like it's been dyed afterwards. So I don't know what the process was to get this color, but as you can see, there is absolutely no um, natural leather color showing through this. It's not a clear dye, as would be with the natural or the chestnut. This is a definite color on top. And I don't know how it's going to wear. I really don't. It doesn't seem to be patining at all. It's not getting a sheen to it. It's very matte. And the leather feels very different. It's very soft. It's not thin. It's a thick leather, but it's totally different than, say, this black one. Extremely stiff. 
very stiff and shiny. So that's a big difference right there. I just dropped my little natural one. So the black one is obviously dyed as well. This one does not scratch at all. Oh, and this one doesn't scratch either. Whatever finish that they put on it, you can scratch it. It doesn't show any scratches at all, which is great. I love it. And this one is what I call the shiny Florentine. Now I do condition all of my bags the same way. And some of these Florentine bags just have a nice shine to them right out of the box. And this one I bought um, used off eBay. So I'm not sure what they did to it. I didn't need to do anything to it. Beautiful, very shiny, as you can see. Really super thick leather. And this is almost exactly like my zip top crossbody satchel in the type of leather. This is chestnut. And you can see how shiny it is and thick. And it was like this right out of the package. I bought this new and it does not scratch at all. It really doesn't. I mean, it gets dense in it from scratches, but it doesn't scratch the finish like the natural one does. So I thought that this chestnut color looked a little bit different than other people's chestnut bags that I've seen. Mine looked darker. And I realized it most when I got my most recent Florentine bag and chestnut. This is the Logan. And I don't know if you can see that, but the color is a lot lighter on this one than on this one. And the finish is totally different. See how this is shiny? This has been conditioned, but again, it's what I call the dry Florentine, where you just barely touch it and it gets scratches all over it. Now you can rub them out very easily and conditioner helps that, but it's just the type of Florentine it is. And this is pretty smooth. It's got a texture to the back, but I wouldn't say it's totally pebbled at all. And the front is very smooth. Almost all of my Florentine bags are really very smooth. I don't mind texture, but they just, the ones I received happen to be smooth. So that is a big difference in color and texture to my other one. And like I said, I don't know if it's coming across on screen. They're looking similar, but they are very different colors. This is a much darker brown but it's definitely chestnut and so is this one and when I got this one the little um, tab that came off that they used to secure the pull strings it was the same type of leather as this chestnut one it was shiny and darker really strange let me see if I can find that little tab it might be easier for you to see here it is this is the tab they had on it See how it's much shinier and a darker chestnut? That's a good view of it right there. Very different. So again, you could be buying something the same color, but because they are natural hides, they're all gonna be different. Now next I'll show you my favorite. This one is Bordeaux and this is my favorite Florentine bag. I would love to get another bag in Bordeaux just to see if the finish was the same. This is my medium Russell tote. Look at that shine. I've not done anything to it. It almost feels kind of waxy and I don't know if that's part of the color finish that they use or the particular leather hide that they used but it's just absolutely gorgeous. Look at that shine. And I've seen some other people that got the Bordeaux Russell say the same thing, that it's just the softest, smoothest of all the Florentines. And it's nice and thick too. So very, very different from say, the finish on the natural, which is has a sheen, but it's not shiny. So I hope that helps some of you I know some of you might be wondering, hey, I got a Florentine bag. It looks different than the other Florentine bags that I've seen. Why is mine so prone to scratches? Other people's aren't. How come some people's Florentine bags are shiny? I think it's all part of the process. And depending on the color used, they're going to have a different process for the leathers. So you're going to end up with a different result. So I hope you found this informational. 
And if you did, please give it a thumbs up and subscribe. Until next time.